72 is to consider a proposed amendment to the town personnel code. Mike? Uh, in these difficult economic times, or actually just the opposite, these great economic times, one of the problems we have from time to time is finding good uh, full-time employees. Recently, we, the council about six months ago established a full-time position. As it turned out, we were only able to hire two part-time people to serve in that one position. It's, it's actually turned out to be an excellent uh, thing for the town uh, in that we have more people available to take over during vacation and sick time. Right. Uh, the one problem with it, however, is that they're, they're coming from other places where they work, that when they job share, they provide health benefits on a pro-rata ba pro basis. For, in other words, if they work somewhere like 60% of a full-time job, they got 60% of the eligible health, health benefit. So uh, I think it's something we really need in this very competitive job market to, to uh, bring, in, bring in excellent employees. So what I'm encouraging you to do is to adopt an amendment to the personnel code, which uh, in defining part-time employees the provision, it states part-time employees are eligible for only those benefits which are required by federal or state law. I would uh, entertain you to add to that. However, part-time employees who job share full-time positions shall be entitled to health insurance on a pro rata basis. I'll move. Second. Second. With one comment. Yes, Bill. Don't, don't get discouraged. <laughs> I just, okay. on the, on, in reading this policy that you have, who works on an all on call basis, would you consider a volunteer fireman on call basis? I do. So are they going to be entitled to this? No. No, because they don't job share a full time position. They don't? No. Do you think that's going to eliminate it? Yes, because those positions have not been established as full time by the, by the town council. Whenever a position is established at full time, the council takes a vote and states this is a full time position. We, you, you don't allow us to set up new positions uh, you know, just on our own. Uh, you require us to do that. You, re you require that you do it yourself. I'll get it straight. So, how about your deputies? It's not a full-time position. You have never authorized a full-time position but as a deputy they fire chief. Appointed and they're in your charter, so many deputies, so on and so forth, within the town. They're not a full-time position. You yeah. thought the only full-time position in the fire department was the chief. It is. In your charter, yeah, it's full-time, but they're part-timers after that. With well, one salary, they don't work on any basis, they just work. They have one salary year. I don't want to prolong it, I just don't want you to get caught in a situation. If you feel you've covered yourself, I'm in favor. I do feel that I, that I do, and I certainly understand your concern. Okay. Yes, ma'am. Um, didn't we take a vote on um, making this full-time position a shared job because of the difficulty of trying of finding a qualified person. Yes. Yes. You authorized. Took a vote on. Yeah. You authorized uh, two three fifths positions instead of one five fifths position. Okay. Any other questions? Yes. I just yes, want to go. clear it up, <laughs> Matthew. I understand that we voted for that, but my point is, you're amending the policy for, for to cover another phase of the personnel policy, and I just wanted to make sure that it didn't include somebody that we had voted on, which is included in your bylaws of the town of Cable Lisbon. That's all. The positions are in your bylaws of the town of Cable Lisbon. Okay. I, you know, I think your point is very well taken, Councilor, and you know, perhaps uh, you know, next year when we adopt the budget, one thing we should be very careful to do is to spell out what other positions is authorized full time by the town council, and you know, sort of have a you go through some motion at some point of what is the authorized strength of, of uh, all the different departments because it is an issue we're dealing with more and more now. We, we had a situation recently when uh, someone was out for an extended term who had had a heart attack and then had to bypass surgery. Uh, you know, you, technically there was there were no funds available to replace that position. I felt we had to, and I did. Uh, you know, they, we should relook really at some of those policies and, and 
make sure that you give the, the manager the authority to, to fill a position uh, in situations like that and to you know keep the town uh, operating properly. Look at issues such as that and such as this. No problem. What was the question? Okay. All those in favor of the motion? <laughs> Any opposed? Okay, that motion carries Two seven. Apps. Two apps. Two voted from the back of the room. I right? I don't think that's right. All right, item 173. To consider authorizing the town manager to solicit new bids for 12 town lots which were first proposed to be sold in February of 1986, at which time no acceptable bids were received. Michael? I've been getting a lot of phone calls from people who didn't bid last time that they would now like to bid on these lots. They are ones that were reviewed by both the Planning Board and by the Conservation Commission as uh, should be sold. We've looked at them and uh, you know, there's, there's no reason why they couldn't be sold at this point point. return them to the tax rolls. They aren't part of the green belt and you know, tend to be very odd pieces out there that chances are would be purchased by one of the abutters. And the cause I'm getting are from abutters who are, who are more interested in purchasing these lots. Yes, I just had a question about the restriction on some of them that no building or structure should be placed upon it and filling is to occur with town approval. Is that because the lots are so small that they're un unbuildable or that they have constraints, uh, land constraints that would make them undeveloped. The Conservation Commission came up with those restraints and you know I think the reasons vary for each individual lot. Some of them are because uh, of uh, the reasons you stated. Others is because the there may be some bag of monkey peed in the area or some situation like that. So it's a uh, number of situations. Yes, Frank? On many of these lots, if abutters are being interested in, from what you see, is it possible that they could get variances and build various things on them, like garages or other other structures or of that that type? Meaning that some of them may be, you know, the trees would be cut down, it would be cleared, and a building would appear there or, you know, part of a building or something like this? I think, you know, generally, most people buy them for one of two things. One is for protection, you know, because they're afraid what else we might do with them. The second reason is uh, is in order to give them more space so they don't have setback problems if they want to add an addition within their existing lot. Well, I guess in light of that, I, I don't, looking at the grand plan, and we'll be doing that when we look at the comprehensive plan again, I guess and so much intense pressure and media, et cetera, about open space, green space, we desperately need to buy more space, et cetera. You know, just the fact of, of greenage, of trees, of, of open land, and here the town has a certain number of acres of open land that is already open land that we're selling. I mean, it may be, it may be a moot point, but in the grand scheme of things, I don't quite clearly understand how on one end we are he hearing a howl from the citizens of wanting to keep open space, which I agree with fully, and on the other hand, we're selling some lots, albeit that they're chopped up and albeit that they're small, we're selling them where potentially some of them you know, will be cleared and built on that. I, I wonder if we're really looking at the big picture here. When, we, when we're so readily willing to put these on the market. I have problems uh, with it. Okay. Lustig? Uh, to somewhat answer your question, Frank, uh, if we sell these lots, this money goes to land, is set aside for land acquisition. Uh, the uh, Conservation Commission has uh, looked at all of these lots and feel that there's no real importance in keeping these. So they'd rather have the money to try to buy something that they feel that the citizens would like better than these. And so you're not throwing away open spaces in the long run. You're trying to generate some money to do something better in that line. Thank you. Yes, Doug? Yeah, I would just like to ask the manager if we approve this tonight, which I, I'm ready to do that he get proper notification up to as many people as possible that these lots are available. That the, perhaps the reluctance at the last offering is because not as many people knew about it as should have known in that time. You know, we're talking 60 or $70,000, which is basically all profit. 
and I'd like to see a good advertising effort go into this. Michael? The, what we did last time, we sent notice to all the buyers we would do that again. We would also put an ad in the paper. Some of these lots, I, you know, I don't expect we'll get any bids on. It's just it came forward in, in a package before, and it, you know, there's about five of these lots I could point out that I've gotten phone calls on. Uh, and even some of those, they might not like the minimum bids I came up with. So, you know, I think you, know, you can do so much marketing, but it, there may, in some of these instances, because of the, the odd shapes and or whatever of these lots, they're not, they're not going to go anywhere unless the butter wants them. It's uh, really in a butter's ball game you know, as far as participating in this for the most part. Michael, how did you, how did you arrive at the um, bids, the minimum bids? Some of them are very low. With extreme, extreme difficulty. With fear and trepidation. Yes. <laughs> Bill? I would just, I'm in favor of selling the lots and whatever, you, and uh, maybe you pick up something that would be more adaptable for the town. But the part that bothers me is a part of the restriction. If I was looking at this, and well, there's one or two of them up in Ocean View there. That if I'm a putter bought the lot, wouldn't they be able to add to the garage and go over onto there a little bit? I mean, you know, what you're saying is that they can't turn around and build another house on Complete I, house. I never said that. Oh, I thought I understood they couldn't build on it. I just wondered what they could build on it. Most of these lots, some of these lots have conditions you can't build on. Some more of these lots are so small or whatever, there's no way they could be built on. If you look at that one, some of those on Ocean View, someone really ingenious, doesn't take much genius, could buy these two lots, also buy another one that's adjacent to it, that's privately owned, and perhaps build a house. I, I know that from one instance with these, with these lots. And in fact, I do know of one instance that someone who's called looking to buy either one or two of these lots has bought and has purchased an abutting lot. You take 98 and 97 and 94 and 92 of this. Either one of them. I think they're, that's the one. They're going to be big enough to, uh, for somebody to do something on. Yeah, well, there was another one of those lots that one of the people calling me, I think it's that particular lot, I'm not positive, that someone has bought the lot next to those two who lives in the area. Okay. All right, is anyone prepared to make a motion on this item? Uh, I move uh, the manager's recommendation that we put these lots out to bid. All right, is there a second? Second. Any further discussion? All those in favor of the motion? Motion carries seven and nine. Yes, Mike? Those probably will be back to you in the month of November with one or two or three or four successful bids and you'll be asked to prove quick claims at that time. All right, item 174 is to consider the Maine Municipal Association mail ballot and Maine Municipal Association convention voting credentials. Uh, we get this annually. The, the Maine Municipal Association annual meeting this year is in Bangor on uh, October 15th. Is that a one-day meeting? The, the voting meeting takes place in one day. The, the, the convention runs over about two and a half. But most of the primary business on that one day. But all the, all the MMA business meeting activities are held on that particular day. Okay, and you will note that uh, our town manager has been, is being nominated uh, to the advisory committee. An impressive resume, I must, I must yeah. say. It wouldn't have happened except I had a friend on the nominating committee. No, I'm sure it would have happened anyway. He was one of the outstanding candidates. Okay, uh, what action would you like to take on this ballot? Is there anybody, first of all, who is interested in going to this convention? Michael, I assume you're going to go. Is there anyone from the council uh, who's interested in going? Not as of now, but you things mean, change mean, between now and October. Okay, then two delegates? One. One delegate? And an alternate. 
I wonder if it will. Did you serve as a, as a delegate one year? I mean, you Last can't year. serve as a delegate if, if none of us can make it up to Bangor that day. Oh. He can it anyway. So, he so, we, so we don't have to recommend Michael tonight. We can wait, or should we just do, go ahead and do it? Well, the meeting is October 15th, so uh, I think that we should do it. We should do it tonight. I move that Michael McGovern be the delegate, the voting delegate of the town of Cape Elizabeth, the main municipal convention. Okay, is there a second? Second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Yes. And then we'll come up with an alternate in the meantime. All right. Okay, if anybody is interested in being uh, an alternate to that uh, convention, please let Michael know. Okay, item 175 is to consider granting a quick claim deed to Paul W. and Carla B. Madro for a tax lien for land and our buildings located in the Oakhurst area. Michael? Yeah, this is one of those odd ones. We don't, we can't find any record of a tax having been owed. The references they have uh, to the particular lots are lots that we don't have listed on our assessor's maps. That's why here, rather than a map and lot, it's listed as the book and page. So uh, I would hope that you would authorize, that you would approve the quit claim of, uh, of the tax lien on book 1965, page 36, the Cumberland County Registry of Deeds, and to authorize the town manager to sign the quit claim. Sounds good. Second, Second motion. Okay, any discussion? All those in favor? Any opposed? Okay, carries unanimously. All right, item 176 is to consider a request from New England Telephone to install two utility poles on Hampton Road. So moved. Is there a second? Second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Okay, that carries seven to nothing. They aren't already up. That's less discussion. That's less discussion. You're out of water. That. <laughs> Sorry. I'm not even sure if we've accepted that road yet. That was my, my question. <laughs> No wonder less of the desk if you do that. All right, item number 177 is to consider authorizing the submittal of a questionnaire on recreational boat access sites. Uh, we have this questionnaire in our packet. Michael filled it out, and uh, the council has to uh, review it. Just the one. Uh, do any councilors have any questions on any of the uh, any of the questions or the way that they were answered? Yes. Lester. Yes, uh, I guess it must be question five. Uh, does the municipality currently own land or what's a coastal boat access facility could be developed? Please check the yes or no. And I see it's checked no. And it says we do not believe so. Uh, my question is, is who, who is we? We the town. Well, it's going to be we. <laughs> we the town? Oh, it was he. He's asking. <laughs> be we. Us. <laughs> so I guess if I uh, don't believe that statement to be true, then probably I would vote against the whole thing. Right? Be up to you, sir. True. <laughs> seems you, uh, to me. It seems to me that we have a facility that uh, you could put a boat ramp in that spot for down for wind. Michael, did you consider Fort Williams? Yeah, I, I considered that, and I, I do not believe it's a location where a coastal access facility could be developed. So you are the weak. <laughs> well, it's not submitted yet. No. The, the we is, uh, you know, at the bottom it says, please have one of the selectmen or council persons signed below to indicate that the board selectmen or city council concur with the answers to the above questions. We is we is those we are we we is <laughs> <laughs> we are we are the people this week with the Constitution who believe so that uh, one couldn't be developed. All right, Penny, did you have a question? <coughs> no, I don't think so. I thought I so. Changed my mind. I don't want. Okay, I don't have a question. All right, Frank. I don't think we should put we do not believe so in the final draft of this. I think it's it's far too unclear. And I mean, for us to say we don't believe we have, you know, I just think we should put yes or no and maybe thrash it out a little bit, but 
I think it's just it's too ambiguous for me to feel comfortable with it, adding a phrase like that on. Yes, it's yes or no. You know? Now I know what you mean. You don't believe that Fort Williams, even though it's it's on the the ocean, can be developed. But I, heard, so I, I would agree know. with you that the answer is no. But I, I just don't like that phrase. I don't think it's it's professional or it's far too ambiguous to throw on this form. Just my opinion. Okay, uh, Doug. I think we have to be careful filling out a questionnaire like this. And the fact that Cape Elizabeth may have one of those little boats being back down on the trailer on the map that says we have access to recreational boats, which is exactly the problem we ran into at Crescent Beach. If you look at the state of Maine Bureau of Recreation map, you'll see a little trailer or a little mark indicating Crescent Beach is a public access point, which it is not and was not until a week ago. And that's only for the launching of a boat, as we now have changed it to before it was record. It was for fishing purposes only. And because we just nonchalantly filled out one of these questionnaires at some prior point where the state assumed it was public access for recreational boaters, we now have that scar that we have to try to, to work with. So even though I don't think this has strong, harsh ramifications, we should think it through before we admit that we have even more public access within the town of Cape Elizabeth. And sure. as, far as, as far as number five, uh, I don't believe we do either. But if we as a group would like that struck, I don't have any problem with that. But the words we believe? I don't we believe we do either. I agree to striking those words. I, I, you know, I, when I fill out a survey, I have to fill it out so honestly, and that's how I, that was my honest response. You know, I really don't think we have one, but I'm not going to say 100% that we don't. Um, Madam Chairman, yes. would it be possible that the Harbor Committee that uh, we're in the process of establishing might have a different view on this question? We've asked the Harbor I Committee to look at My that. answer to this is, I don't know. You don't know that it would be I don't accurate. know that there's another place that might be developed <coughs> for a boat launch. I just don't know. What's the problem with Fort Williams? Michael? I, I think you don't know how to do that. You'd have to do major disruptions to the beach. The rocks keep coming in there. There's, there's questions of its compatibility with uh, the other uses there. Where would you park the boats? Uh, and are there there. boulders? Is it rocky? It is. Oh, yeah. So yeah, I thought it was considered unsafe for launching boats. You thought what? It was considered unsafe. Yes, Bill? I uh, look at it this way. So you had a survey and had somebody look at it to say you couldn't have a boat ramp in Fort Williams. I don't see how we can sit here and fill out an application and say no. You can do most anything if you want to spend money enough to put a boat ramp there. And that isn't what the question is. Do we have a place or don't we? And I think we have a place. If you want to spend money enough, you could do it. It doesn't conform to the shoreline zone. I don't be done with that at variance. So therefore, you need a variance. It, it really can't be done. If, well, that, Doug? Are we trying to answer a question here? Are we trying to say yes or no? On question and five. I would say, with my, with the best information that I have today, I would say we don't. But I would certainly hope that the committee that I hope to be a part of will study it to determine whether or not it is. And I would assume with Bill and myself and Frank on that board that we may bring it to their attention that the council is concerned about it. But if we had to answer that question right now, I would say no, because of its exposure problems, because of the because of the size of the parking. Right now, with the information I have, I say we don't. But I would hope that perhaps we could definitively answer that question through the committee work. So I would ask that perhaps the words be struck after the after number five, but the no remain checked. Second. 
Okay. We're just going to vote on number five at this point, or is no, this why don't we, Oh, maybe I'll make. If there's no motion on the floor, I'll make one. All right, Frank. I would, I would move that we accept um, the survey as it is and authorize the town manager to submit it, but amend it to read uh, to delete the words "we do not believe so" after number five. All right. Is there a second to that motion? No, second. Okay. Is there any further discussion? Yes, Lester. Yeah, I would just like to say I, I did mention Fort Williams, but I do believe there may be other places in town that could could be developed into a program, and I think the, the time is coming for us to seriously uh, look to do that someday. Uh, among the, most of the case, most of the coastline, it, uh, I admit it, it's dangerous, but I would like to see our committee uh, is looking at this type of thing, uh, uh, maybe search out the place or, or tell us that there isn't a place. And I don't answer this question now without some real thought into perhaps being a book out. Could, could we put an asterisk next to that one and number six that says that these two, two items are subject to study by our Harbor Commission Committee? But answer them the way they are mm -hmm. uh, presently. Well, Would it's that be acceptable? Move not to do such, uh, and I don't. I don't believe that I would like to be part of we, because I think differently. You don't agree with it at all, Mister? I think I think it's possible we could find a place to launch boats in this town. What place? Well, I mean, it's simply on land. That's what it says on municipally owned land, right? I think it's possible. Of course it's possible. I think Doug's absolutely right. Yes, Penny. Absolutely right in the sense that the question is received right now. Right now, there's no way of launching boats from Fort Williams Park. But, and I, and I also think there's something in the shoreline zoning too that for, forbids that without a variance. But certainly all kinds of things can be changed, amended, and varied. But that's a long process to go through. Right now, there is no place. If you want to put down next to that that we intend to study on those two items, I mean, we've appointed a committee to study it. That that's fine. But certainly, right now, I, I don't see there's any way of doing that. Uh, I I don't see that that, that question asked that it says which. A coastal boat access facility could be developed. And then that doesn't ask us if there is one that's developed, or there is one in use, or there is a spot now. It says if a coastal access facility could be developed. And I, I can't say 100% that uh, there isn't one that could be developed. I've seen a lot of development take place in places that I, I don't care to see them developed. Mm. Okay, Deb? Well, I, I think, you know, certainly we have a real tough question here. But I think if you want to move on, you have to say something logical like no. <laughs> but I would be, I think, I think I would agree with a little wow. subject to further study. Okay. Uh, yes, Bill? Uh, I couldn't sit here and vote, say no, that we don't have a place. Maybe we do not believe is that sounds like a, a song to me that you would hear once What was scratching that in the motion? Well, I haven't heard a vote on it yet, so I don't know. But subject, no, I said to, in further, the <laughs> subject to, to further study would, would sound better to me. I, I'm in agreement with the manager that it's not 100% no and it's not 100% yes, so we need a little other language there. I would go with subject to further study. And not checking I move to one. amend the original motion, Frank's motion, um, to include the word subject to further study after number five. And number six as well, that's already there. Well, number six. Number five. Yeah. And that, your motion would keep the X after the no. Okay. Is there a second to that motion to amend? Second. Okay. Uh, the motion is that we add the words subject to further study to question five. 
Any discussion of that amendment? All those in favor of the amendment? Sure. Any opposed? Okay. All right, now we'll get to the original motion, which was to accept uh, uh, this survey as filled out by the manager with the amendment that we just voted on. All those in favor of that motion? Unanimous. Easy, huh? Very Move easy. we don't ever, ever go over questionnaires again. <laughs> <laughs> That's not an easy thing to do. I think we did all right. Okay, item 178 is to consider authorizing an application to the Maine State Housing Authority to develop a model housing program and take any necessary actions. Uh, this, is, uh, this is a result of a committee that Michael and I have been serving on, and Alice ran also, uh, with the town manager of Yarmouth, the council chairman in Yarmouth and a uh, counselor from Yarmouth. Uh, I did bring this uh, a report to you, I think at the last meeting, or maybe two meetings ago, uh, telling you that we were working with Yarmouth uh, to try to come up with a proposal to uh, uh, to form a model uh, affordable housing plan for the towns of Cape Elizabeth and Yarmouth and for other communities in, in the state of Maine to use as a model. There is grant money available for this kind of a project and we thought the two towns working together will have similar uh, concerns that land value has gotten so expensive in both of our communities that we are not able to, uh, that median income people are not able to buy into a home in this in either of our communities any longer. So we thought it was definitely a problem that needed to be addressed. We're now at the point uh, where we are ready to go forward. Uh, we, are, uh, we want to apply for a grant of a little over $15,000 to the Maine State Housing Authority. Yarmouth has, all, the Yarmouth Council has already voted to do this and has voted to include $2,000 as their local share. Uh, uh, and showing their local commitment to go ahead with this project. Uh, tonight I am uh, asking the council if they would wish to do the same as Yarmouth uh, to, to allow us to go forward and to also show that Cape Elizabeth is committed to, this, to affordable housing uh, and, and to also allocate $2,000 uh, toward this study. That means that we would be applying for $11,000 from the state. The total cost of, of the project is 15, a little over 15000 For both towns? Yeah. Right. Weston? Well, I guess my only comment is that uh, I think this, this is way too late. Uh, I wish we had affordable housing in this town for people. I wish we could get it. but. I think we've lost it some time ago, and I can't see that we're ever going to reverse that pattern. And even though I wish we could, I think this is a waste of money. This town will never have affordable housing for everybody. It's gone. Well, I don't think we're, the intention is to have affordable housing for everybody, but it's it's to have some affordable housing in town so that we, we can maintain some kind of diversity of uh, levels of income in this in this community. And, and I know it's a difficult project, there's no, there's no getting around that. And, and it probably will eventually, if we really want to do something, uh, the town will have to either come up with some help in financing or with some uh, changes in zoning regulations. So, uh, I don't know what will come out of this, but if we do go ahead and do it, I, I think we should do it with uh, the expectation from the council that we <laughs> that we want to do it, that we think that this is a very important uh, uh, part of, uh, of our uh, community. It's certainly stated in our comprehensive plan that it is the goal of this community to maintain diversity. Yes. Doug? I would just like to say a few words in support of what Lester's saying. I think it would have been fine to have developed a program or a policy a few years ago where affordable housing could be had in Cape Elizabeth. Affordable housing in Cape Elizabeth is a relative term. 
you know, 150,000 <coughs> may be an affordable home for the type of people who live in Cape Elizabeth. Unfortunately, this council and previous councils have developed policies and zoning ordinances that have been so restrictive and so land intensive that affordable housing no longer exists in Cape Elizabeth. It's, it's easy to develop a policy that may work in other communities, and if that's your goal, then I would help support the idea, the concept of it. But I think to pretend that you can develop a policy, and I think it's a, it's a nice thought, but it won't work. I'm convinced it will not work. I've tried to develop land in Cape Elizabeth. I tried to buy land in Cape Elizabeth to build my house on. I was lucky enough to do it, but I wouldn't call it affordable. And it's not what affordable means today. I think it would be an injustice to even apply for a loan that's going to take money out of someone else's hands to pretend that Cape Elizabeth could provide affordable housing. It's an honorable goal. I support and I, I think it, it's done a great job. But I think it's a waste of money. Okay, any other comments? Mayor Jim. Yes, Nancy? I just we with both my seat points here. Um, I think uh, it's been a great source of frustration for the state of Maine to see the federally subsidized programs go down the drain as they have in the last few years. Uh, the Maine State Housing Authority has tried to bridge the gap with its own program, first time buyer program. Um, I, you may think that we won't be able to provide affordable housing for Doug and Lester, but we won't know until we've tried. And at any rate, it's the main state housing authority that's going to decide whether Cape Elizabeth and Young take off on, on this, uh, this program. So with that, I'm going to move that we authorize the manager to um, send this grant in to the Maine State Housing Authority. Second. And also with the $2,000, Nancy? That and, we'll, and, we'll, and to pledge our contingency. And that way we'll retake it, Mike. That's correct. Um, $2,000 for the local matching amount. Okay, further discussion, Bill? Yes, I would just like to say that I'm kind of in agreement with Lester, <coughs> but I am going to vote for this because I think we should put some effort into it to try to do something in that area. Affordable housing to me is just a matter of uh, words for somebody to speak on because you can afford your house where you're living. So I, I think that is a mis conception in my part, what's affordable housing? Is it affordable for everybody? Uh, the rich people, they can afford a house with a million dollars or so, uh, two or three, and so on and so forth. So I think they've got to define it and see what they're after here. I don't call that, a, it says affordable housing for everybody. I don't think you'll ever find that in Cape Elizabeth, but you might be able to move it down where it could be a, more people could afford to live in Cape Elizabeth. I mean, working people. It's getting so that they're beginning to move out. My question and concern is, did the town have a vote for you as a member of the town council to be on this committee? I don't know if we voted. If we discussed it, and you authorized uh you authorized us we to... We authorized the joint service, to, the joint staff, to go ahead with the joint. To go ahead, because somebody was involved in getting COG involved to do this draft right here. So the town, we had to authorize someone to do that. And uh, that time you all said, it's a, well, it sounds like a good idea. Go ahead and see what comes of it. So this I, is what has come of it. I don't. I you for being on the committee. And I, 
I would vote for your fee on the committee, but I don't want to give two thousand dollars to a committee that we don't have a bona fide member. Is all I'm trying to get at. The the proposal council provides that the council would appoint a new committee to oversee this process uh, uh, with five to seven members from each community. So this this actual process would be overseen by a new committee appointed by the council through the normal appointments process. Okay, I didn't happen to see that. I must have missed that. Bottom it's page five, the, I think. Yeah, I missed that. Okay. In the, uh, on the, the first page under the cover-up letter, uh, in the second paragraph, the last sentence says that the lack of affordable housing has become an issue for residents who seek to encourage diversity within their community, to provide opportunities for first-time home buyers, <coughs> and to create opportunities for children to remain in the town in which they were raised. And these really are the, the, uh, the goals that uh, we have put forward for, for this uh, new committee that will be chosen. But the, this is what we're striving to get at in both communities, the, these three objectives. Diversity, opportunities for first-time home buyers, and opportunities for children to remain in the town in which they were born. So those are the goals that we were aiming at. And uh, I, hope, I hope that the council will be willing to, to let the two communities go forward because of, I, I we're not pretending that we want affordable housing. Uh, I think we, I, I hope we want to show that we really want to have something in this area as a community and not make any pretenses and just go through the motions. I mean, if we're going to do this, I think we ought to be uh, hoping that something will come out of this that we can act upon and, so, and that there will be results. Well, are there, we do have a motion. Yes, Lester? Well, I, I, I sort of know at the heart what I s said before. Uh, I'm certainly willing to uh, gamble. I'm just willing to put $2,000 in just to hope that something will work. I'm just saying, I, I just don't, I, I think it's just talk, but I'm You're not optimistic. No, I, I wish I could be. Okay. Yes, Frank? I, I would like to say that I, completely support what Nancy was saying, and I don't agree with what was said earlier by, by Lester or Doug. I don't think it's a matter of, of just talk. I think we have a real serious problem. When I say we, I mean those of us that are policy makers, municipal, state level. Here's an opportunity to work with another town, which is a rare cooperative venture, and then to work with the state. We can't look at, as public policy makers, as one of probably our biggest problem in the entire town that we can't ever solve it. I, I just am not that pessimistic. I'm more optimistic, and this is a beginning, and I think also what Councilor Ambrose says is critical. I'm in it for the long haul. I'm not just voting for $2,000, and I think some miracle solution is going to come back. It may be very distasteful elements of it, or it may be a very hard road to go down, but this certainly is the number one issue. What type of town do we want in Cape Elizabeth? And more importantly, can we do anything about it? So I just don't think that pessimism should be should reign the day here. And I do wish that every citizen could pick up a copy of this excellent report, which was written by Jane Amaro, chairman of Cape Elizabeth Town Council, and Warren Turner, chairman of the Yarmouth Town Council. It's, it excellently defines the problem that we have here in, in so many of the, the rising costs of the homes, and yet we still, as citizens, want as a goal that it doesn't have to be that way. So. I am more optimistic about sending these people off on this mission on a, on a high note and a good note, and, and I personally am in back of you 100%. So, good luck, and I, I think I'm looking forward to the results of this. Thank you, Frank. Mm -hmm. Any other comments? Yes, there is a motion. Yes, Bill? My only other comment in this committee would be looking at affordable houses. Would they get, do they get into anything like uh, Council Tinsman spoke about, zoning and what have you? Do they get into that? There may be some recommendations regarding that that will come out of this research. Because I think that's a key issue as far as affordable housing in the case. Mm -hmm. Is your zoning? Mm -hmm. That in the discussion, that was something that you know, if someone was willing to make something affordable, that and there were certain standards of affordability that perhaps some of the other standards uh, could be adjusted. That that was the discussions of the committee get. Of course, that would be through a long process and 
uh, this also would tie in very well with the Comprehensive Planning Commission uh, going to be ongoing at the same time. Yes, Doug? I just want to say one more time, I totally agree that we have a serious problem in Cape Elizabeth. Affordable housing does not exist. Affordable housing will not exist because you're spending $2,000 and getting a grant to match it. In my opinion, it's too late. That's the only reason why I'm voting against this, is because it's a waste of $2,000. Now, I would love to eat these words. You're going to get your motion passed. I'm just voting against it because I know that I want to learn to fly by my own means, but no committee is going to get it so I can fly. And that's, I, I put my likelihood of flying above affordable housing in Cape Elizabeth. That's it. Fine. I, I can't resist. This council, <laughs> this council of Tinsman have a a more attractive alternative for us at this stage, other than Jane Amaro, talented person, or another council chairman, talented person, Libby Mitchell, up in the main housing, willing to, do, just, just philosophically, what, what, is, what, what alternative would you lay out for us to attack probably the number one problem in town, if not through this means? The number one cost, the number one reason why it costs so much to live in Cape Elizabeth is because you have an unbelievable ordinances against construction. The two acre minimum lot size, the, the, the review process and the planning board, it just, affordable housing, it will cost as much to go through this planning board or the process of developing a develop, of, 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 of going through the process of presenting a development than it costs for an affordable lot. The, the cost, the overhead to present a subdivision in Cape Elizabeth Per lot is probably more than you'll spend it as on an affordable lot. I've been through it. I see the process, and I, it just the bureaucracy is unbelievable. That's one of the things that you'll have to address. But I think the fact that at least we want we're trying to address all of those problems is a beginning. And certainly, I don't think any of us think that by investing two thousand dollars in this uh, uh, grant application that we're going to get all the answers. But we might get one, or we might get two, we might get something that will work for us in Cape Elizabeth. And if that happens, I think it'll be well, well, well worth that $2,000 investment. Now, I don't think we should say no without at least trying to do something. No, I, I, I think we should try to do something. My only point is what I said a minute ago, and I want to stress it again, we make sure the committee will review the ordinances and what have you, and the process of going through the planning board in Cape Elizabeth, I agree with Council Tinsman 100%. It's very expensive, and you talk to a, a developer and they'll tell you this. That, that is one can, of the proposed, proposed Okay, proposals. and I just hope that committee will look into that. Okay. Are we ready for the question? I'm ready. Okay, uh, the motion is to uh, authorize the town to apply to the Maine State Housing Authority for a grant and to commit $2,000 as the community share to show a commitment uh, to affordable housing. All those in favor of the motion? All those opposed? Motion carries six to one. Okay, item number 179, which is the last regular item on our agenda tonight, is to consider reviewing the status of the 1987 Town Council goals. Uh, this is, I think, the third or fourth time that we've reviewed them this year. These were goals that were established in December or early January uh, that the Council uh, hoped would be accomplished during this uh, calendar year. And I think we've made excellent progress. Uh, as you look through the 32 goals which we set for ourselves, uh, we've really made very good progress on most of them. There are only a few uh, that are uh, as yet uh, to be acted upon. But I, I'd like at this time to uh, take any, any comments from counselors, uh, any suggestions on uh, some goal that they feel we haven't really worked hard enough on yet, or, or any comments at all that you might have. 
Bill? I just, I just to kick it off, maybe back. as far as the boundaries between Cape Scout and South Pole, I brought in a map tonight for the town manager to review as far as the Cape Scarborough line, and I understand he's going to review it for the town manager of Scarborough and, and possibly one or two others to, to get an agreement on where that line is. And uh, I think that has moved forward, and I hope by fall that that will be settled once and for all. Now, and as far as the uh, bridge goes, hey, I think they're making progress. <laughs> it's actually being built. It's actually being built, and I stopped and reviewed it the other day, and it looks though so they might handle a big truck when they get down. They so right. skip the rest of the way in, but they, what I know about it, they've done a tremendous job so far, and I'm glad to see it. So maybe the wheelers can use 77 after it's completed and not Wells Road. Right. Nancy? I, I, Jane, I just want to commend the manager for really keeping on top of these and implementing them with, uh, with a lot of dedication. Mm -hmm. It would be easy to sweep this all under the rug mm -hmm. in the press of every day business, but I really want to commend you, Mike. We'll I'm try to so keep on having all these wonderful <laughs> ideas. <laughs> when are our next goals due? You no, know, if you look through these, the, com yeah. the council has had a lot of involvement in each of these goals. You know, if you, if you look at them, you know, the, the implementation within each one, you'll, you'll notice the word council appears on at least every other goal of where you have had active involvement in them. So, really been working together, particularly with your foresight, uh, gotten a lot done. Any other comments? Okay, uh, are we ready to move on? Accept the report. Lester? Yes, I'm ready to move on. Okay, would you like to move that we accept the report on the goals, sir? Yes, I am. I'll okay. second it. All right. Mention. Yes. Okay. Right? And I know it's just a matter of semantics. But we ran into a problem earlier where we accept reports, and we receive reports. And I think that it should be a policy of this council to receive reports unless we're accepting what they say as being the absolute. Um, I could cite some examples, but what we're doing tonight is receiving a report. We're not accepting anything. And I'll explain later some of the problems we get into when the minutes show that we accept reports that really we're just receiving. I don't want to waste your time. Okay. Lester, would you be agreeable to change your motion to receive? Yes, I would, because I used to bring that up years ago. Okay. <laughs> All right. Uh, and would you be agreeable, Bill, to uh, second the motion with that change? No problem. Okay. <laughs> Any other discussion? All those in favor? Okay, that motion carries seven to nothing. It's now, time, it's now time for citizens' discussion items <laughs> on the agenda, and I will note that there are no citizens left at our meeting at this point. Are no, there any councils? Do we have a number that they can call in on? <laughs> yes, we should have a phone in. <laughs> uh, uh, do we have any councils who have uh, any items they'd like to bring up that are not on the agenda? Lester? Yes, uh, this letter to Michael from the Department of Transportation on yeah. the excuse of not of, of lack of maintenance state roads and town cases, I think is a real pile of bull, whatever you want to call it. <laughs> I, I can't accept Would you like to quote I can't their, accept this. <laughs> would but you I, like to quote their reason for uh, uh, not doing any work to improve Route 77 or Sperling Gap? Uh, I, I don't know if I can find it now exactly, but if I remember, they just didn't put us on the list. Yeah, but the reason they didn't is because they said that the roads are in good shape compared to anything else in the state, but because our local roads are in such exceptional state, exceptional condition, the state roads look inferior as a result. So that's why they didn't put us on the list. Would you, do you want us to respond to this in any way? No. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, I don't know if there's anything you can respond to it. You know, I, think we sh I think we need to, uh, to respond uh, uh, to what 
to keep in touch with them and try to get them to fix up some of these deteriorating roads. Okay. Frank had his hand up. If you oh, talk about roads, is it related to that? Okay. It's on the sure. road issue. Yeah. You know, I I take great exception to what they said at the end of that article about our roads being paved. It was just within the last few weeks that we repaved our dug up roads. But I'll tell you that our roads with trenches were better than Route 77 on the new strip. And that I would seriously think that this council should respond to that letter and perhaps even ask the state to reconsider the speed limit on the strip. We're in two areas I find it uh, very difficult to control either a light duty truck or Bronco because of the ruts. I mean, it's posted for 50 miles an hour, the least the state can do for providing access for over a quarter of a million out-of-towners to our beach, which they call the state park, is to keep our roads maintained. I mean, we've lost umpteen thousands of dollars in revenue because it's a state park. And part of their agreement was that they would upgrade our roads and maintain them, and they're just not doing it. And I'm talking about Route 77 specifically, the strip. But if you go over by the dump, don't travel the speed limit over there because you'll lose it. It's just like the old Ocean House Road that went by Bothells. You couldn't possibly get caught for speeding down there because you couldn't do it. And not, I'm, I'm not, not advocating speed. people speed. But I'm saying that both of these roads that they are required to maintain are horrible. And it's not because we've paved our roads. It's because they haven't kept up to their part. Are you suggesting that we demand to write a stronger letter in response to the state's letter? I think the manager should, should demand that they come out and maintain the roads. That would be tricky. Lester? Yeah, I, I think Dougie brings up a very good point. I don't understand why I didn't think of it, but we do have those two state parks down there that draw five better than a million dollars a million people a year and I would think they would love to show the other stages that we have after I have a department in this state. I think those roads need to be be helped and, and I'd like to see a manager uh, try maybe a little stronger language and, Hi, Bill. Yes, I'd like to speak on the road too. I just have a question to the manager. If, if there's any possibility of any time that we have another construction project on a state road, that they could get some kind of agreement in advance that somebody's going to fix that, else besides waiting for the state to come in and do it. Because I think that project over there with the treatment plant is deplorable, the way that road is. Now they say yes, they look at it and they'll come back and fix it. But it's been that way all summer, and you know, I've spoken to you once or twice before. So why couldn't agreement some way or another on a contract again? This may be something that we might want to make a note of, that when they paved that parking lot and what have you, they could very well have paved that area and fixed it up without waiting for the state to come do it. And do you think there's any possibility? Uh, should that be explored? Knowing the gentleman that wrote the letter, I, I kind of chuckled at it because yeah, I think it was a good, he'd make a good politician. <laughs> the way I would think. He is. I, I think you know, that is possible. The Scott Dyer Road is a good example. The end of Scott Dyer Road was a total mess down near Spurling. Uh, the state did not have plans to do that as far as I know in the next five years. If they had waited five years, they wouldn't have had a road to pave. In that instance, we told the state we were paving it, and we expected them to pay their share, and they came through. Why can't we do that on 77? That, that's a little longer. <laughs> a bigger strip. Uh, I, 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 I wouldn't want to spend the, the town dollars and then come back and count saying that the state didn't come through with their share. Okay. I agree that, that you could send a stronger letter mentioning the state parks and the amount of traffic that's increased over that road because of the parks. The first letter I sent was rather strong. I think uh, you know the second letter perhaps should uh, reflect this discussion, mm -hmm. as and perhaps should be hand delivered rather than sent. Well, the odds probably didn't smell it all this time. Maybe I'll I'll get the uh, council chairman to go with me to uh, 
stress the, the concern of the council if she would be willing to do so. Just choose one of her regular days in Augusta. One of her days off. <laughs> perhaps, if I may out of order here, perhaps it would be in, in the new strip, the strip over by the dump looks terrible. And most of the people in town, I would bet, don't know that that's not our that's right. problem. Right. That's the state's true. problem. It looks bad on our public works, it looks bad on the council, that perhaps if we just can't get the state to come out and do what they're supposed to do, that perhaps we post it to let the people know who's responsible and who's let it go to the pieces. And perhaps, you know, if the road isn't up to standards, that uh, perhaps uh, the state parks ought to be cut back a little bit in the traffic that they generate in town so that the roads don't totally crumble. Because we need those roads to commute back and forth to work. And there should be some sort of policy for that. Absolutely. Yes, Michael? In some states, as you enter like state roads, they have signs that go up this section of road maintained by Maine Department of Transportation 883, whatever the rest of the yeah. number is. Uh, I think those signs are fairly effective. I think maybe we should put up this road is not maintained by the state. <laughs> <laughs> this well, road should be maintained by the state. Phil? I just want to answer the council attention there. You wouldn't want to put up that it's not maintained by the state. But should because they figure it, it would be maintained by the county capitalist, but it should be maintained by Okay, I'm sure the manager will write that, an excellent letter on our behalf, and I'd be happy to go to Vester and deliver it. Scott he only lives in Scott. Oh, oh Scott. I'd be much happier to go to Scott. <laughs> <laughs> Pleasant Hill Road. Great. Okay, any other items that citizens elected, I mean that council's elected right now? Frank. Yeah, every now and then it does happen that a severe conflict arises between things that happen in our lives other than counselors and our council duties. And I have a severe conflict on October 14th with the meeting, which is uh, something that's, that's important and I don't need to go into what it is, but it's just one of those two immovable forces hitting here. And I was wondering if, if we could entertain a motion. I've, I've spoken with one other council that also had a potential conflict on that day. If we could move the Wednesday meeting, the 14th, to Thursday, the 15th, if it would be amenable to everyone. Uh, if it's possible, I'd be agreeable. I know we moved one other council meeting, so there is some precedent, but I'm just asking, and I would be agreeable and throw myself upon the mercy of the court, as it were. The October meeting uh, falls on, the regular meeting falls on a uh, holiday. So our council rules say that when a when our regular meeting falls on a holiday, the meeting will be held the following Wednesday, uh, which in October would be October 14th. Um, but I, I don't think there's any reason why we couldn't meet on the 15th, except the only, the only problem is that Michael is going to be our voting delegate in Bangor. At the main unit, you'd be back. I can you drive back to the meeting and then have to go back again on Friday? That's right. Yeah, the manager's meeting is Friday. Yeah. I did that for Canada one time for a sewer meeting. I know what that's like. Was there a problem moving into Tuesday? 13th? School board, I think, meets that night. Here, on TV. Because mm -hmm. there's, no, there's no problem in my mind moving meetings around any way you want. We're doing it in December. Adam Chen, why can't yes. we adjourn and discuss these things afterwards and let these people go home? Because this is a well, matter that the public should know well, while we're well, We should set our meeting yes. before, okay. we, before we leave and then we can adjourn. Um, well, I can't do it on the 13th. That's um, Does anyone that's else, anybody else Just have a problem with the 15th, Thursday the 15th? I, that's not the RWS meeting, is it, Leslie? I have nothing right now, October 15th. Wednesday is possible for me, but it's difficult. So therefore, I will address Thursday. It's the same way with me. I, Thursday would be a much better day for me also. But I hate to see my whole life. I think you know, the only difference is I'd probably end up, rather than just driving up all day Wednesday, I'd probably drive up Tuesday and stay a night. So I didn't make the day a little less long. That's, that's if you, fine. If you look at the agenda, maybe there, you wouldn't have to be here on council meeting. That's true. <coughs> I, I, guess, 
Augusta's a long way. It's not that it's long. I'm, I'm this is Bangor. Bangor. Well, yeah. Bangor. Yeah, it's well, that's longer. Yeah. Yeah. Speed limit 65 minutes. <laughs> Sorry. Well, I, I think he should personally, if we're going to go to Thursday the 15th, I think the manager should arrange the agenda so he wouldn't have to be here sure. because I'd hate to ask him to drive from Bangor down here and drive back the next morning. Not safe. That's right. Bangor is a lot further. Gus is a little different than Bangor. Mm -hmm. well, what, what I'll do is I'll look at Friday's agenda and see if it's important that I, that I be there. That's when they usually, the managers usually get together. Uh, no, look at our agenda. Look at our agenda. Yeah, well, it, I'll look at your agenda too. Okay. All right, so yeah. I'll wait. Let's set it for Thursday. So okay, are we in agreement then that the October meeting will be on Thursday, October 15th? Uh, the minutes will have to uh, be corrected to show that the public hearings will be on October 15th. Awesome. Okay? Thank you. Is there anything Thank else? Yes, Michael. One very, very brief thing I wanted to say, a clarification. I received many calls from counselors and, and even more from citizens on the street <laughs> about the newspaper supplement last Friday night involving the revaluation. I would like to clarify the newspaper requested the information uh, to put that uh, flyer together, that supplement. Uh, the, the town did provide it under the Freedom of Information Act. Uh, we were cooperative with them, uh, although we did have no choice but to provide it. It was, it was the newspaper's idea to put together the list. It, it wasn't suggested by the town. It was something they had previously done in the towns of Cumberland and, and in the city of South Portland. There's quite a bit of confusion as to how far it was circulated. The newspaper only circulated it in the newspapers uh, that were given out in Cape Elizabeth by home delivery either Friday or Saturday night. Some received it Friday, some Saturday. It was also only received uh, at Cape Elizabeth and South Portland newsstands or at the counter at the newspaper itself. Uh, I do think, you know, whether we like the fact the newspaper did it or, or didn't, uh, and I realize a lot of people didn't like it, I, you know, would like to say that I think Steve Campbell, who uh, did work on it, did do a fairly good job with it and was, for the most part, accurate and uh, reflected the process that occurred. Uh, but it is out there. The newspaper did do it, and uh, it, it was all a matter of public record and the town did provide the information when it was requested to do so. Thank you. Thank you, Mike. Yes, I'd like yes. To, if I may, I'd like to comment on that because I did get more calls, more people comment on that than anything that's happened in the last year. And it wasn't so much as being published, it was, a, it was more so being in the newspaper that they were really concerned about when I got done talking to each one and questioning them back and forth. <coughs> Because I said back when they done it the last time, the town printed a booklet and it was available to all residents of the town of Cape Elizabeth. That didn't seem to bother them so much as it going in the newspaper feeling that it went all over hell. And uh, that was their feeling and they felt if anybody wanted to know what my evaluation is and if they want to know bad enough, they should be able to go to town hall and get it that way without sending it out to them. And, uh, the only gripe that I got about the article, my number one comment, and I'd like to say it publicly now, that uh, how I felt about the revaluation is that right. if the town felt that my land is that much more valuable, which somebody went up three times, that maybe I should develop it instead of farming. But he didn't put down the paper, and I was disappointed. One other thing in reference to that, I think everyone should know that effective, I believe it's September 29th, there's going to be an additional amount of, additional piece of information that's going to be available at town offices by state law as a result of an act of the last legislature. And that's that not only will the, the values be public, but also if a property hasn't been sold, or if, any, if anyone has either purchased or sold a property, we, we get, we now get, we have been getting for many, many years the sale prices, that information will now be public, effective, uh, the end, I believe it's the end of this month, uh, which which is you know a major news step, and I'm sure the newspaper will be asking for that, and wouldn't be surprised it'll be printed regularly right next to district court what people are buying some property for. So that that used to be mm -hmm. that used to be public information until a few years ago. I don't see that that would be that would get pretty stale real quick. Mm -hmm. Well, did did everybody on the council receive compliance about? I did. I did. I did too. I received money in the mail. 
<laughs> Keep it coming. I, I think also, like Councilor Jordan was saying, I had an in-depth interview with Steve, as, as I'm sure everyone did. We spoke, I would say, almost for an hour. And he asked me many questions about what I thought of it and some of the problems in the town. None of it was quoted. I was really glad to see the way he quoted uh, Councilor Carson, which, you know, a lot of the way I felt and other things. And I was just surprised at the excerpts that he chose. I don't know how others felt, but I was very surprised because I gave it a lot of thought, called him back, and had some what I thought cogent things to say. It just, it just made it appear that all of us were saying, yeah, you know, that's fine. We all accept it. No, no problems. But I, I just say again. I'm glad that he quoted what you said because at least there was there was a dimension to it there. You know, the younger families and what about the elderly on, on <coughs> what about the town just skyrocketing and you know, children of people lived here for a long time can't live here. I think a lot of us had a lot more concerns than we were given credit for in those articles. I was very disappointed in the articles. My own two cents here. Same here. Move we adjourn. Is there a second to the motion? Second. All those in favor. The meeting is now adjourned. Good night, boy. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. For yes, camera people, yeah. camera people, directors, the whole crew back there. Good job. For yes, Frank, we appreciate you it. <laughs> no, and I always have to close the door. I done. You see it.